This is the Holy Gospel according to Mark chapter 1. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all sick and, de and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early, early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach them also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Praise May the Lord be with you. Please be seated. Have you ever wondered what, what it would be like to spend a day with Jesus? And what would it have been like to be one of his disciples and be with him day in and day out? Well, in Mark 1, we have the opportunity to follow Jesus through the full day. Remember that last week we started the Sabbath in the synagogue in the city of Capernaum, where the Lord Jesus um, taught with authority and even expelled um, an unclean spirit from a righteous man in the middle of the synagogue's service, creating a great stir. stir. Well, the news about Jesus was already beginning to spread that same day Jesus and his small group of followers left the synagogue together and went to the home of Simon and Andrew, most likely going there to enjoy a delicious meal, meal together after the synagogue. But when they arrived, they found that Simon's mother-in-law was ill. But Jesus took her by the hand, lifted her up, and she went instantly heal. How powerful our oh Lord is to heal. She got up so happy with that had just happened and she went on to prepare the meal. This is true. I know from my own uh, personal experience when the Lord Jesus does something for us and we recognize the good he has been to us, we want to serve him but not only him but also to those who love him. I think uh, this, proves, um, this proves the greatest reason for all to be in the service of the Lord. That is because we are grateful for what he has done for us. Continu continuing our day with Jesus, in the evening when the sun had set, the whole city of Capernaum gathered at the entrance where he was. Jesus laid his hands of each, each, each of them and healed them. No one was turned away, no matter what their need was. He healed all who came to him, those who were sick and those who were possessed by demons. You may ask, why doesn't he take away all of our diseases today? Why does he allow some of us to suffer 
even when we come to him and ask. I don't know why he, he doesn't heal everybody who asked him today, just as he did that day. But what I know is that what, whatever our need is, we will always find, find relief in him because he will never turn away anyone who comes to him for help. For help and that he sustain us and give us strength for times in suffering. Continuing our day with Jesus. As you can see, it was a very busy day, but very, very early in the morning when it was still dark, Jesus got up and went to a lonely place to speak with the Father. What a great lesson for everyone. For we see that even Jesus felt the need to go alone to, and pray. Think about it. If the Son of God needs to do it in this earth, don't you think we need to do it even more? Now, why do you think Jesus was praying? In John 5:38, Jesus made it clear that he did not seek to do his own will but the will of the Father who sent him. So I think he has set a great example for us by doing that. We must pray before act to seek the Father's will and then pray afterwards that the Father will bless what was done and guide us to the next, next, next task. And to end our day with Jesus, what a su surprise it must have been for the disciples when they went to look for him. And Jesus said to them, let us go to the neighbor, neighboring cities to preach there also, for this is why I have come for. The Father's purpose for him was not simply to stay in one place and heal everyone who, co who come. He could have stayed there healing all the sick and needy around the world. And in, and in, in himself, that would have been a very good, good and wonderful thing, but it wouldn't have been good at all if that wasn't the reason for what the Father had sent him. He could have stayed and established a wonderful ministry uh, of healing or perhaps, for perhaps millions, he didn't, because he had to go, to go on and preach in the message. The time has been fulfilled and the kingdom of God has, re has drawn near, repent and believe the gospel. And then he had to go up to lo the long road to Jerusalem and give himself up to wicked men to be crucified for our sins. Jesus had to go, had to do the work that the Father had given him. He needed to fulfill the Father's purpose for him. And the lesson he teaches on this day, a day with him is this. When we look the, uh, when, we, when we know the Father's good pur purpose for us, we should not allow ourselves to be distracted from it even by doing other good things. Let's consider from, from the point of view of our church. We live in a time when people everywhere have their own ideas of what the church should do and what good things it should be, uh, we should do for people. And of course, we must do good things for people. But listen, we shall never do the things that people think we should do, even good things, at the expenses of what God has called us to do. We, brothers, brothers and sisters, are called to proclaim the same message of salvation that Jesus gave to, his, to this world. We have been commissioned to go and make disciples. And if we, as church, are doing all kinds of good things, but we're not fulfilling the purpose for which the Father has left us in this earth, 
then we're not doing his will. Now, let's consider this from the individ individual point of view. As followers of Jesus, we are called to dedicate ourselves to the task of pro proclaiming the message of Jesus to this world. But each of us has a particular calling of how we should do it. I, for example, am called to be a pastor. But if I spend my time doing other things, even good things, and I don't do what God has called me to do, then I'm not doing his will. You may be called to be part of proclaiming Jesus' message in, or in another way, perhaps as evangelists, or per perhaps as Sunday school teachers, or perhaps as prayer warriors, or perhaps in some way that provides material help for the work of the gospel. But listen, if you do, if you do other things than the Father, uh, if you do other things than what the Father has called you to do, even good things, and you do, do them in neglect of your calling, then you are not fulfilling God's purpose for you. So dear Claremont Lutheran Church family, let's ask God as a church and as an individual believers, whether or not we have been doing the things he has wants us to do. Let us ask him to clarify his purpose for us and make, and make a commitment anew not to be distracted from his will May the Father make clear to us the priority of his purpose, encouraging us with the Holy Spirit and allowing us to walk with, the, with our gaze fixed in Jesus all days of our lives. Amen.